I am a picture taker. So naturally, when I got pregnant, my little camera phone was never far from arm's reach. My sweet girl came from home from the hospital to face all of her baby milestones with me armed to the teeth with an iPhone, Facebook, and a compulsive desire to document every last detail of our new life. From placenta to first poops in the potty, both from my daughter and from me postpartum, <laughs> I had this little family of three more than covered. Soon we found out that I was pregnant with little number two. My sweet girl was still very well documented despite her sister dumping something, breaking something, or flat out reverting to complete unpotty trainedness every single time I touched the baby. Then something amazing happened. Surprise-ish. I became pregnant again. My wonderful husband and I flipped the pregnancy test over on Christmas morning, 2012, we looked at each other and said in unison, we need a bigger car. <laughs> Pregnancy and labor were completely unceremonious. They just were. My poor son, it's not that I don't want to capture all of his sweet moments. I really, really do. It's just that it's so much harder. Where is my phone? Does the two-year-old have it? She learned how to take 46 selfies in a row by holding the shutter button down. <laughs> the four-year-old probably has it. She's camped out in her bedroom watching Barbie Life in the Dream House. <laughs> oh, hang on. It's in the refrigerator. How did it get there? No one knows. Shortly after our son got here, I learned something that every parent of three knows, and actually anyone with basic math skills could tell you. We are outnumbered. The jump from two kids to three kids uh, sort of slapped me in the face and then poked me in the perineum and then punched me in the boob. <laughs> you do what you can in situations like these. You have to figure out how to adapt and function like a normal human again and not just like a lactating, butt wiping, food prepping, laundry washing, never resting mom robot. For me, adapting looked like a trip to Target. Don't ask why, I don't know. <laughs> In the car, my little chunkster screamed like someone was ripping his legs from his body while my girls alternated singing Old MacDonald and sc screaming at each other, she's singing over me, <laughs> the entire 30-minute drive. I would not be discouraged. This is my time. Back to normal. I crammed that little dude in the front of my Moby wrap, and with the promise of popcorn and a slushie, I bribed my girls into quiet submission. I took each of them by a hand and led them toward those beautiful red doors. That's when I heard it for the first time. I've heard it on an almost daily basis and I know that I will hear it frequently in the future, but I will not forget the moment that innocent and probably well-meaning older, older gentlemen said the words that I have grown to hate, mostly because they're true. You have your hands full. <laughs> Every time I venture out into the world with my three beautiful little beasts, no matter if it's a perfectly calm, peaceful, everyone is dressed and their hair is brushed kind of day, or uh, we are lucky we made it out the door kind of day, someone or multiple someones tell me that I have my hands full. <gasps> How did you know? <laughs> is it the crusted food and boogers on my shirt? Is it the fact, it, it's my boobs, isn't it? They haven't been supported by anything but a sports bra since 2009. <laughs> it's because you noticed I only have mascara on one eye. <laughs> I dropped the wand at a red light on the way here. Oh, I know, it's because you heard about the not one, but three potential house fires that I put out last week. When I used our kitchen tongs to take crayons that have been stuffed in envelopes out of the baseboard heaters. <sighs> I know that I have my hands full. I have to drag two baskets around the grocery store if I actually want to do any decent amount of shopping. The kids sit in the front and the food sits in the back. There we go. <laughs> I know that I have my hands full because the majority of my makeup, if I'm wearing it today, was put on with my fingers and Q-tips because my girls keep stealing the brushes and I can't put it on without the brushes. <sighs> I know that my hands are full because it is a special occasion when I get to take a shower. As in, there is vomit in my cleavage and also my butt crack. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> I know that my hands are full 
because they are full. In my right hand <laughs> is the hand of my sweet little mini-me who will spend hours singing to herself while she draws pictures of our family. And in my left hand is the hand of my feisty little two-year-old who can and will sing, she was doing it this morning, what does the fox say a hundred times in a row if you ask her? Please don't. <laughs> and strapped to my body somewhere in the middle is my amazing little boy that I am just only barely getting to know. So my hands are full, but my heart, it's overflowing. So from now on, when I hear those words that I hate so much, I'm going to choose not to feel the slight sting of a stranger judging me in my full hands. I'm going to replace the word hand with heart and smile because, yeah, my heart's full. Thank you.